Welcome to Life Enrichment Ministries. This is Carol Clemens, and I'm doing just kind of an impromptu thing from my heart this evening. This is on Father's Day Eve, I guess you could call it, Saturday evening before Father's Day. And I just felt like I wanted to share something about fathers. I have um, been 11 months now that my hubby has gone to the Lord. And he was the father of my children. My oldest is 46 years old. And then I want to talk about briefly my, fa my own father to uh, begin with, uh, Reverend Raymond Theobald. And some of you that are watching might know him from his six years of being in retirement and teaching at Christian Life College. He was the father that I can talk about that received the Holy Ghost back in 1925 when he was 15 years old, and he became a lover of the Word of God. And if I can say anything right now, as I speak to, about this Father's Day weekend, and it's, and it's going to be on different things. I don't have notes. I'm just talking from my heart. Because Father's Day could be a very sad day for a lot of people because of an absent father, a father who died young, a father who, who abandoned the family. Um, a father who was abusive in all types of horrible ways. So Father's Day might not be the happiest day, but what I want to talk about is what fathers can be because I've seen it in real life and it started with my own parents. And knowing what uh, my father was and I lived with him for 24 years before I got married, and knowing that it was a man who was submitted to God, who loved God above everything else, and then loved his wife and loved his children. And he lived the life, as I do teaching, you that follow my ministry, go to carolclemens.org, C-A-R-O-L-C-L-E-M-A-N-S.org, and check out my website, read the About Ministry page. As my father followed God, he loved God more than anything, and then he loved his wife and or children that is taught in the Word of God. And I witnessed that and, and saw it in action before I, as a little girl, was growing up into that home that could witness a parent who was parenting in a God way, but was parenting from the heart of God. And I didn't even know it was in the Bible yet because I was too young. So even today, as I do counseling, I've been counseling for 29 years. I deal with marriage, family, anxiety, sexual abuse victims, pornography addiction. You go to the About Ministry page in my website, and you can read about all the things that God has brought to the table for me to counsel, and the answers come from God's truth. But let me come back to Father's. What God wants in every father and what he has laid out in his book is before every father to be a loving husband and father as he was the Christ to purchase his bride, the church. And we collectively, who have been born again according to Acts 2.38, are collectively the bride of Christ. And Jesus Christ is our bridegroom. And how did he prove his love? He proved his love. By coming to earth in the flesh, Emmanuel, God with us, and dying on a cross for to pay the price for my sins because we were all born sinners fallen short of the glory of God. And I want to tell you the biggest issue that I find as I work with couples is the father not and the husband not understanding his role as God intended from the Word of God. And there could be various reasons. And I, I, this can be old converts or newer converts because most of them did not have that godly example like I had in my home where I saw the father and mother role and it was played out before me before I knew it was in the Word of God. But God has a plan. And if we're willing to surrender to God, our fathers and husbands can become the man of God that God intended. The reason that we don't have the husband and fathers today in the majority, 
that are willing to totally surrender and they love their families as Christ loved the church is because of one issue, and it starts back in the Garden of Eden when Adam and Eve were tempted of the devil. And I'm not going to go into the long story of it. But the Bible teaches us in the New Testament that Eve was deceived, but Adam was not, and yet he took the fruit that she gave him. And you know what he did in that moment? He abdicated his authority that God had given him as the leader and the pastor and the priest of his home. And that's what we have happened today in the church, in our families. And it breaks the heart of the wife and it breaks the heart of this counselor because I see the fallout of that. And it's not just about going to church. Um, a lot of people woke up during this COVID time when their churches were closed and they couldn't go to church and they realized that their walk with God was more based on church attendance than it was an intimate, ongoing relationship with God where you're talking in your heart to Him on a continual basis about everything that you do in life. And this comes from the greatest command that says, Love me, God, with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And that's all of us. Husband, wife, and we should be living that before our children, and that's how our children learn to have a love for God. But what that means there in that first commandment, all means everything about me. What I think that creates my, what I, yeah, my thoughts create my feelings, and then I act out on how I feel. If I have totally surrendered that to God, then I am going to be holy as he is holy. I'm going to walk the path of modesty for a woman and of tender leadership for a man as they follow God. And as Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. Every husband, every father, every wife should be able to say that. But there's a huge drought, it seems, of teaching the word of God on how to follow God on a daily basis. That's a relationship with him that, as Paul told the people at Athens, in him, in God, we live and we move and we have our being. We make up our mind what to do in all parts of our life through what we know about God and his word. And I should have brought one of my Bibles over here. I have probably over 30 of them. And, uh, but I want to emphasize Father's Day could be very painful for a lot of people, but my goal for this teaching is to tell the husbands and the fathers, you are the priest in the home. You're the first God with skin on that your children see. And as we study the word of God, we know that God had a simple plan. God had a plan that Christ was the head of the, of the church. The husband is under Christ and the wife is under the husband and the children with her. And that kind of a divine plan works only this way. Dr. Tony Evans is a Baptist preacher. He's, uh, I've heard of him for years, and I love hearing his teaching of the Word of God. And he recently has been teaching to the men in his church how they need to be God followers. They need to stand up and be the men of God in their homes and I just, I might someday try to call him up and talk to him and said, can we partner for a little bit of this way that you put out to the men in your church, how they are to be the husbands and the fathers and they're to be submitted to God? And when they're submitted to God, then the wife with any kind of love of God in her heart will automatically submit to that kind of a husband because he is submitted to God. That's how it works. I saw it in action in the 24 years I lived in my parents' home. And I give God praise. My husband and I were blessed with 50 years of marriage before the Lord took him through. He's nine years older and through a lot of physical issues he suffered. The Lord took him home 11 months ago. And he was a 60-year licensed ordained minister. And what I tell you, we're ordinary people. All of us were created by God. Every human being that's ever lived has been created by God, and we were born sinners, fallen short of the glory of God, and we had to learn how 
to be saved first, see our need of salvation, and then learn how to grow up into him. Ephesians 4.15 tells us, grow up unto God. And the thing about that, at 75 years of age, I still have room to grow up unto the Lord. There's no stopping place in that. But the counseling that I'm doing for marriage and family is so sad because there is this lack of example, and I am assuming the lack, the lack of the teaching of how the husband needs to be the priest and the pastor of the home. As I said, he's the first God with skin on when it comes to your little ones. They look at us, the husband and the wife, as the leaders, and we are the ones that introduce them to God through our actions, not just our words. But we're an open book read of all men, both husband and wife. And we should be the same in the home as we are at church. We should allow the Holy Ghost. If we want the love, joy, and peace in Galatians, the fifth chapter, we must be patient and kind and good and faithful and gentle and have self-control. That's being Holy Ghost controlled. My heart is stirred because I'm in the trenches Monday through Thursday, afternoon and evenings, nationwide counseling people that have had the Acts 238 experience and yet they do not understand how to live a God-centered life, how to be holy as God is holy. And I'm talking about holiness of the heart. I thank God today for my father because he became a lover of the word of God. He studied and studied long before there was a lot of helps and all these things, but he studied the word. He, he learned how to rightly divide the word of truth, and then he was willing to live it. My children have told me that one of the main reasons that they are living for God, yes, we went to church all the time, but it's because how we lived at home. How we treat each other is how we're treating God. And our children know us really well. That doesn't mean we were perfect. As a parent, I had to apologize for my attitude at times, not for wrong words. I didn't use bad words. I didn't tear them down. But sometimes I had an attitude and the Lord would give me that Holy Ghost angst and I would have to ask my children to forgive me about how I handled something. But I'm telling you today, this is the biggest need of the body of Christ, is to get men that are hungry and thirsty to be the leaders. I heard a young man on the internet this evening, and I'm going to investigate his book, but he was telling how him and his wife uh, almost came to a divorce and how God got a hold of him and said, you love me, and then you love your wife like you're loving me, and you love your children in that way, and the bottom line was, love God and love your family as God wants you to love them. And he wrote a book out of it, and I'm going to be checking out the book, and I'll probably be uh, recommending it. Uh, I also wrote a book back in 2011, God's Design for Marriage. God's Design for Marriage. It is a very small handbook. When you turn it sideways, you can't hardly see it. And I wrote it that way because statistics show that most men are not readers. They don't love reading as the majority of women do. So I tried to make this a book that was very easy to understand, very easy to understand, but I packed it full of scriptures. And my pastor at that time wrote a foreword for it. Uh, my superintendent of this at this time, I gave him the book and he later asked me if he could teach from it. It's packed full of scripture. And if you are a man and a husband in the church and you do not know what your responsibility is from God, it's a small handbook. Please read it. Read it with your wife. You can get it off my website, carolclemens.org. Or you can get it if you're um, a Kindle reader. You can go to Amazon and you can read it. God's Design for Marriage by Carol Clemens. I'll get it up there closer to the camera so you can see it. It is full of scripture. And I've had couples being willing. You have to have a willing heart. 
to sit down and read this together, and they only counseled me two or three times because they did what the Word of God said, and it changed their marriage. What I know that we all are going to stand before God when it comes to our relationship with Him and what we do with our life. But I also know that the Bible teaches that the husband is going to have to answer for the kind of pastor and priest he was of his home. Every wife that has a heart for God wants that husband to be the humble man of God that prays, that reads his Bible, that loves her as his wife and the children unconditionally, that gets his anger under God's control, that doesn't just bark and think that the Bible teaches that when you bark, your family's supposed to jump. That's not in the Word of God. And my heartbreak is that this Father's Day is sad for so many people because the Father is not what he should have been or what he should be. And I know the answer is in the Bible, and I extracted God's truth and made it very plain in the writing of this book. Again, you can order the book through my website, carolclemens.org, and you can, and I'll put the, uh, put the website below the posting of this video today. But my heartbeat is we all need to surrender totally to God. And again, it's from the great commandment, that one scripture after salvation. Love God with all of your heart, soul, mind, and your strength. Your strength is your body. This is how I live for God through my body, what I do. And 1 Corinthians 6 tells us to glorify God in my body and my spirit, which belongs to God. So let's go back to the great commandment. If I'm going to love God with my whole heart, soul, mind, and strength, I have to put my thoughts in captivity to the Lord. Take my thoughts to God, which create my feelings, which then create my actions. And that's in everything I do. We need to make it real. How we act in life, how we treat other people, are we treating them as we would treat God because he created all of them? And he said, what you did to the least of these, my brethren, you've done unto me. Let that just sink in a minute. We need to have God in the center of every decision that we're making, and especially the Father. He needs to look at his family as a mini, M-I-N-I, church. I've told people recently uh, several times, and I think I've even talked about it on a video, that we have 168 hours every week. If we went to church eight hours a week, and I don't know anyone that does that, if we slept 60 hours a week, it still gives us 100 hours in a week to work on a job, go to school, have relationship with the family, do whatever we have to do to make life happen. My challenge to everyone but especially to the fathers, as they are to be the leaders in the home, are you living your life that 100 hours a week? Are you living that life with God in the center of all you're doing on how you treat your family, how you work on the job, no matter what you're doing? Do you do it heartily as unto the Lord? Do it all, Colossians, the third chapter, two different verses in there says, do it in the name of Jesus, and then do it heartily as unto the Lord. That's for all of us. Please don't say, Carol Clemens is just bashing fathers. No, I'm trying to stir up the gift that lieth within them, and I'm encouraging all of us to be godly. We're an open book read of all men. People that know me close will tell you who I am, and they will say she's what she is in the home, out of the home, whatever the atmosphere, I am the same person because I'm accountable to God. Even in those 50 years of marriage, I didn't do what was right to just make my husband happy or to please him. No, I strove to do what was right to make God happy. And when I'm teaching marriage and family seminars, which that's where the book came out of because I had been teaching for uh, probably 20 years at that time on marriage and family alone. But uh, what I'm saying about it 
I have to be responsible to God for every thought, feeling, and action. And we all, when we teach our children that, that every word that comes out of our mouth we're going to be accountable to God for, that our words are either words of life or they're words of death. And I just pray that every person that my life, the Lord brings into my life through counseling, I do nationwide, like I said, by phone, by Skype, by FaceTime, and I do it Monday through Thursday afternoon and evenings, and I do it for the glory of God. Bible-based counseling. I'm always asking the question, what is God's truth? Because you know that's what we're going to stand before God and have to answer is what is God's truth? It's not my truth. It's God's truth. And I have to be accountable to it. I cannot teach, write, or minister in, in uh, like I said, counseling, teaching, or writing. That's the three forms of counseling that are of ministry that I do. I can't teach something that I'm not trying to live. None of us are perfect, but we should be looking for Jesus to come at any moment and not fear that you're not ready. No, 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 no. We don't have to live like that. If we know something in our life that we have done wrong, we repent of it. Genuinely repent, turning away, walking away from it, and never doing it again. And God said in his word that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. My heartbeat is to be able to enrich every family marriage that contacts me, that they'll be able to realize they're the mini church, M-I-N-I, church, and how we treat each other is how we're treating God. That one factor should make a big change. Get rid of our selfishness. Lay our selfishness at the feet of Jesus and say, God, work on me. Mold and shape me after your will. Jesus is coming soon, folks. I happen to know a little about eschatology because that's what my father became a theologian, a great studier, if there's such a word of the word of God. And I know without a doubt that Jesus could come at any moment. Are we ready for that? Or as I heard a preacher not too long ago, uh, as I was watching a funeral of someone that I knew that the husband had died at a young age of 58 with cancer. And the officiating minister was looking at this congregation and saying, are you ready for your date with death? And he said, I know it's a hard thing to say, but God knows our birth date and he knows our death date. And I don't know when it's going to come. But I want to be ready. So how do we live? We have to live today with a heart of integrity, with an openness to God and saying, God, I want you to live in and through me. And as I said, my children, and I have the same testimony. I was even talking to a niece of mine, and she had that testimony from her mother's life. She said it was the way my mother served the Lord that uh, that impressed me and let me know that this God thing was real. All right? That's what all of our children should be able to say. Now, whether they choose it or not, we can't make anyone choose salvation. But if we make it real and alive and talk about Jesus is coming, Jesus is coming. He could come at any moment. And the point of it is whether he comes or whether we would die, we're all going to die someday or if the Lord comes and takes us in the rapture of the church or the catching away of the church as the Bible talks about it. I want to be ready. If you study something about heaven, there's much more than floating around on clouds of glory, but God has something special planned for his church. And we should know that so we could talk to our children about heaven when they're young. That we have, God is going to, and I'm going to bypass some things that happen there in the end or in the beginning or through revelations. But at the end, we, the bride, are going to come out of heaven with the Lord on white horses. He's going to set up a thousand years of peace of kingdom on this earth, and we're going to rule and reign with him there. At that end of that thousand years, there's going to be the final uh, fight, and I'm just going to make it short here. And the devil is going to be put in hell forever and his beast and everything about what happens in Revelation is going to be put in hell forever and ever. 
God's going to burn this earth up and he's going to create a new heaven and a new earth. And guess who's going to rule and reign over that? The bride of Christ in the Old Testament saints. I want to be in that number. I want to go there. I mean to go there. There's a chorus. He said I could go. His word tells me so. And I want to share in the beauty and the glory of being with him for eternity, forever and ever and ever and ever. So whatever we go through here on earth, it's worth it all. Oh, and, and, and I have a book in my computer called Our God's, Our Job-like Adversity. Our 50 years wasn't a heaven on earth. We got along well. God helped us. We loved each other. But things happened in life that brought us great pain. And we had sorrow of death and different things that happened. But I'm telling you, it's worth it all. Jesus is coming. And I'm challenging. I pray that you show this to your fathers and to your husbands. I pray that, that you'll get the book if it's Kindle and you like Kindle, that you'll order the book through Amazon or you can order it on my website. Like I said, it's a thin book. Can't hardly see it when you turn it sideways, but it's packed full of God's truth. It's a life changer because God's word is a life changer. And one of the bottom line scriptures that I use for counseling, it's Romans 12, 2. And it said, be not conformed to this world but be transformed by renewing your minds. And it says, because then you'll know what is God's perfect will. Well, this is full of the word of God, and it's going to tell you God's perfect will for marriage. And the subtitle on the book is God's design for marriage is the title. And then it says secrets to love, joy, and peace in marriage. Remember, if you have the fruit of the Spirit, you're supposed to be patient and kind and good and faithful and gentle and have self-control. When you do that, you're going to have the love, joy, and peace in your home. And I challenge everyone to stir up the gift that lieth within us because Jesus is coming soon. And I want to walk on the streets of gold. So may God bless you. Have a blessed Father's Day. And just be stirred up to be more like our Heavenly Father.